Welcome back to VCV Rack Fundamentals. In this part we'll be exploring the example patches which you've been provided with. This one I'm going to add an envelope to the LFO. So you can see it's basically the same patch we had before and we're still modulating the pulse width modulation of the VCO. But this time I've added an ADSR and a VCA to help us with the signal coming from the LFO. The purpose of the VCA and the ADSR is that when we initially added that pulse width modulation change it was a little too snappy and aggressive and that's because the LFO we could adjust the speed but we couldn't adjust the amplitude of the entire modulation. But by feeding the LFO output into a VCA and then generating an envelope for that VCA, we can also include amplitude as well as the LFO speed within our modulation. And you can see that encapsulated on the scope. There are two signals on the scope. One is the signal from the VCA and one is the envelope shape itself and you can see how one is contained within the other. In this next example, I'd like to introduce you to the Attenuverter. It's another really simple and incredibly useful module. Now you may have heard the main difference between this patch and our previous patch was that on the filter the sound started off bright and then became more muted rather than the filter envelope starting off muted and becoming brighter. And that's because I've employed an attenuverter. As its name suggests, allows me to attenuate signals, make them higher or lower, and also invert them, flip them 180 degrees. If I place the attenuverter in its central position and play a note, you can see there's no output from the attenuverter. 12 o'clock position is actually zero for both the positive and the negative versions of the incoming voltage. If I now raise it all the way up for positive, You could see that our envelope was generated and the frequency started off quite muted and got brighter and brighter. I could limit the amount outputting from the attenuverter just by lowering it a little bit. And now you can see that we still have the same envelope shape but the filter never gets quite as high because we've limited the amount of volts available from that envelope. And we can also invert it. Let's flip it all the way around. Such a different sound, where the filter starts off quite bright and then mutes away. And again, we could have the full 10 volts of that adjustment, or we could limit it down to fewer volts, just by pulling it back a little bit on the attenuverter. In this example, I've doubled the number of available oscillators. So in this example, you can see that I've added another oscillator. I've also added a mixer so that we can blend the two different sounds from the different oscillators together. You may also notice that I've made fine adjustments to the tuning of each oscillator so that as they play together they beat against each other in a really interesting way. When you open up this patch I'd encourage you to play around 
with the mixer and just try changing the different levels. The waveform types so that you're blending two different types of waveforms in that mixer. Also play around with the frequency of the filter and the different envelope shapes. You'll see straight away that again with a handful of modules, a couple of oscillators, a filter and some envelopes, there are an unlimited array of different sounds that we can make from this simple setup. In this next example, I've doubled the number of available filters. In this example, you can see that two filters are available. One of our oscillators passes through one of the filters and the other oscillator passes through its own filter. These two filters are then mixed in the mixer which passes on to the VCA. So when you open up this one I'd advise you to play around with the filter type, low pass, high pass and different mixes of low on one, high on the other. Change the waveforms around on the oscillators, play with the envelopes and adjust that mixer again to see what kind of sounds you can get out of this particular setup. In this example I'd like to introduce a sequencer and a quantizer. The first thing you might notice on this patch is that the MIDI to CV converter is no longer connected. Instead, we're using the sequencer to run eight steps with three rows of different voltages available and also some gates. And this runs round and round in a loop. I'm using row one of the sequencer through a quantizer. This is because the voltages that come out of the sequencer aren't strictly adhering to musical notes. They're just voltages from naught up to 10 volts. Whereas we know that our volts per octave system means that an increase in a volt is a doubling of frequencies and those are kind of fixed western notes. So the quantizer reads the incoming voltage and applies it to the nearest volts per octave note that the incoming voltage is. It also allows us to select and deselect available notes from the 12 semitones so that we can create any scale or mode. I've then decided to use the other available rows of the sequencer to do modulations on different modules. In this case you can see that I've patched row 2 into the frequency of the VCF, row 3 is modulating the resonance of the VCF. The gates are triggering the ADSRs. So in place of our MIDI to CV converter, row 1 is creating the notes and the sequencer's gates are triggering the envelopes. So when you open up this patch, play around with the sequencer voltages, the available notes on the quantizer, and have a think about the idea of using a voltage to create notes in this way. A clock in the system can be any regular pulse, or irregular. It could be coming from your DAW, it could be running from a sequencer. It could also simply just be any voltage that goes high and low, regularly or irregularly. But when a device reads a clock, it will start to run its sequence, based on that. What a clock divider does is it senses an incoming pulse 
and then outputs divisions of that pulse. And I've patched every quarter note onto the kick drum and every other quarter note onto the snare. I've also used the gate output from the sequencer to drive the hi-hats. So when you open up this patch, why not play around with the sequencer, take a good look at the clock divider and figure out what it's doing, mix those levels together and play around with the synth voice against the drums. So I hope you've enjoyed studying these fundamental principles and I wish you well on your modular journey. Here's a little more bleeping and booping as we say goodbye. Thank you.